Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tessia and these are beauty lessons, what God is speaking, teaching, and revealing to me. Today I am wearing my reason behind the beauty earrings, the single pearl on a silver hook. Um, behind every piece of beauty there is a cross or a reason behind the beauty and they're designed with evangelism in mind. Anytime someone comments on your earrings, you're supposed to share with that person about the reason behind the beauty in your life, which is Jesus. If you'd like to know more about those, they are linked in the description below. Below. So I was reading 2 Peter, um, and there's two things that God showed me. Um, the first thing is knowledge of God solves everything, and the second thing is exercise develops. So I was reading 2 Peter, and 2 Peter uh, 1 verse um, 2 says, Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And I wrote, in abundance, God, you are never lacking in your supply of grace and peace. It is mine for the taking. And then I wrote, through the knowledge of God, through Christ, knowing you brings greater peace and greater grace. So there's something about the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord that provides us with grace and peace. And God is never lacking in his supply of anything. In verse 3, it says his divine power has given us everything we need to live a godly life through our knowledge, again, through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. And I wrote, again, knowing you brings about what I need. In the, I decided to look it up in the Amplified because I was feeling like there's something about knowledge. And in the Amplified, verse 2 says, May grace, God's favor and peace, which is perfect well-being, all necessary good, all spiritual prosperity, and freedom from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So all those things, freedom from agitating fears and um, moral conflicts and Every perfect well-being and all necessary good and all spiritual prosperity be yours through the full. It, it doesn't even say be yours. It says be multiplied to you in the full, personal, precise, and correct knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I mean, all of that solves a lot through knowing God. And again, in verse three in the Amplified, it says, for his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness through the full personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory and excellence, virtue, full personal knowledge. That was just standing out to me, the full personal knowledge of God, knowing him, really solves everything. <laughs> it solves everything in the human condition because we were created to know God and be known by him. So when we know God, we can have freedom and um, understanding and peace and spiritual blessing and uh, freedom from, from fears and agitating passions and moral conflicts. I mean, freedom is found in Christ. Freedom is found in God. And it's not just knowledge about God. It's the personal, precise, correct knowledge of God. It's the personal, intimate relationship with God that brings this peace and this freedom and this joy. Um, in verse 8, it says in the Amplified, first, uh, Second Peter 1 verse 8, for as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle or unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And I wrote again, knowledge of God, personal, intimate, precise knowledge keeps us from wrong things and gives us everything we do need. Power in knowing Jesus and walking with him daily. There is power in knowing God and walking with him daily because he does solve your difficulties. He solves your problems. He solves the wounded places, the confused places, the, the places in torment and turmoil. God wants to come in and unlock you, free you from the inside. We all have this internal world that we experience. There's the external world and the internal world. And God wants to come and be God over our internal world and give us peace and freedom and joy 
joy. And when we seek him and find him and know him, he does solve these things inside of us. If we let him, if we give him total control, he will come in and he will solve these, these things inside of each and every person that feels so wrong and so broken and so confused and so wounded and so weak and so frustrated. If we really give God control, total control of all of our hearts, he will come in and he will solve these problems. Knowing God really does solve everything. So I felt that was one day and I felt like, you know, God, the knowledge of you really does solve every single human problem. Every every problem that arises in the human condition, knowing Jesus solves it. I mean, when Jesus walked the earth, he healed the blind, he raised the dead, he healed the, the lame and the lepers, he, he healed uh, people who were sick and people who had the woman with the issue with blood. Like, these are all natural things that God solved in, in, their, in their life. He, he healed them. But he did that to prove that he wanted to do something greater. He wanted to heal our hearts. He wanted to heal us on the inside even more so than he wants to heal us on the outside. Because the inside is, um, you know, Jesus said that it's not what goes into a person that defiles them, but it's what comes out of their heart. Because out of the heart comes, you know, um, passions and lusts and evil desires you know, it's what comes out of your heart that defiles you, not what goes into you. So God wants to solve the the, the heart. He, he came to solve the human heart, to heal the human heart. And the, the question is, will we let him? Will you let him? Will you let Jesus come into your heart and, and heal you and, and solve the problems in you? In John 14, Jesus says... Um, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. You know, God wants to make his home in your heart. Um, in Revelation 3, Revelation 3, it says, Revelation 3.19 here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. So Jesus wants to come into your heart. He wants to have full, personal, intimate knowledge, you to have it of him. And I mean, he already has that knowledge of you. God wants you to have that full, personal, intimate knowledge of him and let him into your heart to solve these, these places that are so broken and damaged and confused. You know, our hearts are our control center. The reason Jesus wants to heal our hearts is because when he has our heart, he has our all. When you have someone's heart, you have their all. God doesn't want to just reform or refine your behaviors. Jesus isn't looking for behavior modification. He's looking for all of your heart, which then changes your behavior. Because if you only have a person's behavior, you'll only have it for a period of time. People always gravitate back to what their hearts desire, what their hearts truly want. They always gravitate back towards it. But when your desires change, then your, your outward actions change. So God wants to come in and change the desires of your heart, give you a new heart. In Ezekiel 36, Jesus says, or... Um, God says through the prophet Ezekiel, I will give you a new heart. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put a new spirit within you that will cause you to walk in my ways. God wants to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Will you let him into your heart? Will you let him come in? Will you desire intimacy with Jesus? I mean, full, personal, intimate, precise correct knowledge of God? Will you let God have full knowledge, full, full intimacy of your heart? And will you desire that intimacy and that knowledge of God? The verse, um, there's a verse in John uh, 8, I believe it is. And it says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That word know there in um, the original language, I believe it's Hebrew, is the word that means like intimate knowledge. In Genesis, it says Adam knew Eve, knew his wife Eve. That was a personal intimate knowledge that he had when it's talking about them um, being intimate. 
And that same word is used in John 8, 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it is a full, personal, intimate knowledge of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to God except through me. He is the truth. You're supposed to have a full, personal, intimate knowledge of Jesus and you will be set free because he is the truth. And if you want to be in Christ, you must be in the truth and you must face these things about yourself that you don't like, that you avoid, that are difficult to deal with because God always deals with us um, in, in love and we should trust him when he says, I want to change this area. I want to heal this area. I want to correct this area. I don't want you to continue and persist in the habits that you're continuing and persisting in because of this wounding. I want to heal this wounding. We have to let him in, even if it's scary, even if it hurts, even if we're afraid, will you let Jesus into your heart and have full personal intimate knowledge of him in order to be set free? Um, the next thing was in uh, verses five through seven in second Peter one, it talks about, um, you know, adding to your faith. I'll read it. Second Peter one verse two. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, I read all that, you know, add to this, that, and to this, that, you know, to faith, goodness, and to goodness, um, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, love. Um, and I decided to read it in the Amplified. And in the Amplified, it says, for this very reason, adding to your diligence to the divine promises, employ every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, develop knowledge, intelligence, and in exercising knowledge, develop self-control, and in exercising self-control, develop steadfastness, patience, endurance, and in exercising steadfastness, develop godliness, piety, and in exercising godliness, develop brotherly affection, and in exercising brotherly affection, develop Christian love. And I noticed a pattern. When you exercise something, you develop something. What do you do when you go to the gym? You exercise your muscles. What are you trying to develop? Your muscles. You exercise something to develop it. So I wrote, um, oh, and then in verse eight, it says, for as these qualities are yours and increasingly abound in you, they will keep you from being idle and unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, these qualities are mine for the taking and can increase in me. And they act as guards or protectors. God, give me an undivided heart. I want to know you. I want to be consumed by you and with you. I want the fervor, love, and devotion I once had, a heart set ablaze and on fire with you. So when we exercise our muscles, we seek to develop um, strength. We seek to develop mobility. We seek to develop, I mean, bigger muscles is what people want to do when they're exercising. So uh, I realized that in the Christian life and in the Christian walk, we have to exercise things. I have been on a recent um, consistency kick. God has really been highlighting consistency to me and consistency in exercise. Um, I I love walking. I've always loved walking. I think it's great. Um, and I, I just, I love it. But God told me recently to do more strength training because walking, um, while it is very good for your cardiovascular and your joints and your body, um, it's not too good for building strength. So I felt like God said, you need to focus more on strength training. So I've been consistently trying to um, do 
exercise and I do like Pilates so um, I consider that strength training and I've started doing that consistently but um, I don't always want to do it and sometimes it feels hard and I still do it anyway so God was highlighting to me there is something about exercising you know consistently in order to develop a new quality so in exercising your diligence or um your in, it says in exercising your faith develop virtue so as you exercise your faith you develop something you develop virtue and and resolution and christian energy is how it put it in the amplified and then it says in exercising virtue develop knowledge and in exercising knowledge develop self-control and in exercising self-control develop steadfastness and patience and endurance and in exercising steadfastness develop godliness so as we and in exercising godliness develop brotherly affection and in exercising brotherly affection develop christian love so we have to exercise these things the christian life is a life of crucifying the flesh and exercising new muscles. You know, babies have to grow up. You don't come out of the womb strong and built. The same is true of Christians. You don't become a Christian and you're just strong and built and you have all these spiritual muscles. No, you got to exercise them. You have to work them out in order to develop them. Even when it's hard and even when you feel like my muscles are so tiny and I haven't made that much progress, you have to consistently persist in doing it. I actually recently saw a video um, today actually of someone who it was like an exercise fitness video and they said that you know people underestimate what they can do over a long period of time and they overestimate what they can do in a short period of time. In If you are consistent for a long period of time, people underestimate how far that'll take you. The consistency of doing it regularly over and over and over again. You know, people who go to the gym, they, they don't think that in two weeks they're just going to be swole and built. You know, you got to go to the gym consistently to build your muscles. People are there for like months and months and months. So you have to persevere in exercising your spiritual muscles and when you do these qualities are yours they're yours for the taking these qualities are yours for the taking and increasingly abound in you they will keep you they will guard you and keep you from being unfruitful unto the full personal knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. It actually says from being idle or unfruitful. So if we exercise our spiritual muscles, we will be constantly active and proactive for um, Jesus and for his kingdom and for his glory. And we won't be idle and we won't be unfruitful. We'll bear much fruit for his kingdom. And I recently talked about how success and fruitfulness drives us. It motivates us. We love fruitfulness. We love being successful in an area. That's why consistency and exercise is so hard because you don't see the success right away. You don't see the fruit right away. You got to wait and still be consistent. So we love being fruitful and we have to exercise these muscles consistently in order to be fruitful. So um, that's what God was showing me from 2 Peter 1. Full, intimate, personal knowledge of Jesus Christ solves everything. And we have to exercise in order to develop. We have to exercise faith and knowledge and godliness and love and self-control and perseverance. We have to exercise these things in order to develop in order to grow, in order to mature, in order to become the fullness of the Christians that God wants us to become. You know, in verse 4, it says, through these, through his very precious promises, um, he, oh, through these he has given us his very precious, great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world caused by evil desires. We are supposed to participate in the divine nature. We are supposed to escape the corruption of the world um, through evil desires. And that is where our hearts, God wants to change our hearts. That's where the evil desires come from. We got to crucify our flesh. We have to let God come in and change our hearts and give us new hearts. We have to exercise these things in order to develop. And through all of that, we will be fruitful and we will be partakers of the divine nature. I mean, when you think about that, that's 
quite blessed. You know, grace and peace be yours in abundance, not in tiny portions, in abundance. Abundance means surplus. Abundance means extra. Abundance means more than you need. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So I'm going to pray. I pray this video bless you. Um, if you've made it this far, please like and subscribe or comment below any way that this video um, spoke to you or even any prayer requests you have. I would love to come alongside you and pray with you that God would enable you to persevere, to overcome, to whatever it is. So um, I'll pray. God, I thank you for everyone watching this video. Lord, I pray that everyone would let you into their hearts, God, and they would have a deep and personal and intimate and precise knowledge of you that brings about change and transformation that is concrete, that is um, solid, a change and a transformation that can't be undone. In Isaiah 43, uh, the Lord speaking says, who can deliver out of my hand when I act, who can reverse it? No one can deliver out of your hand. And when you act, God, no one can reverse it. So I pray that you would enter into everyone's hearts and everyone's lives who's watching this video and wanting you to change them. God, I pray that you would go in and change them in an unchangeable way and they um, would be healed and delivered through their intimate and personal knowledge of you, God. And I pray that when they grow tired, when they grow weary, they would exercise their faith and their knowledge and their um, love and, and self-control, and they would develop into the mature men and women of God that you are calling them to be. I ask it in your name, Lord Jesus. Thank you for watching this video. A new video comes out every Friday. I pray that you all have a blessed and a beautiful week, a week and a day filled with God's beauty. See you next time. Bye.